In part one of lecture one, we will look at our first Java programs. Let's take a look at our first program in Java. The first line of the program is public class My First Java. My First Java is the name of this program. The main program at the very beginning will be a class and we'll see that this is not necessarily typical of the classes we'll be working with later, but for now we're going to assume that class is a program file. We have the word public in front. That is something that we will discuss more about later. Now, after we have the header, again, public class my first Java, we have an opening curly brace. Unlike Python, where we can tell the level of, of the code that we have by the use of indentation, in Java, we use open and close braces to mark the beginning and end of a block of code. Now, we will still use indentation. It is a style issue, not a syntax issue. However, now inside this, we need a header for the main method. Yes, it is a main program, and the various procedures that we work with in Java are all typically called methods. The distinction between programs, I'm sorry, between functions and methods that we have in Python does not exist in Java. They, the main method will always begin with public static void main. And if we repeat this a few times so we get comfortable with it and think in terms of this, it becomes public static void main, public static void main. Now you'll see that we have string, open and close brackets, and then args. We'll talk more about these parameters later but for now, we'll just take this all as boilerplate, just something that we have a block of code that we will insert in there with none of this explained to us yet, but we will see this within the next month. We have another open brace here, and we have the only statement that we have in the program. And by statement, I mean something that is actually going to get the computer to do something as opposed to explaining to the compiler, the program that will do the translation, what this is all about. System.out.println, println as in print line, and then inside there, this is my first Java program. I need a closed brace to mark the end of the method. I need a closed brace to mark the end of the class that is the program file. Let's take a look at the one executable statement in this first program. System.out.println. For now, we will take all of that as one unit. After that, you'll see the open parenthesis, and then inside quotation marks, this is my first Java program. At the end, you'll see a closed quotation mark, a closed parenthesis, and a semicolon. Now, obviously, as you, we've seen before in Python, we have, in, we have our message inside parentheses, but you'll notice here we will always be using double quotation marks, not double quotation marks or single quotation marks as we saw in Python. There is a semicolon at the end. All statements need to be terminated with a semicolon. Lastly, you'll see it will then print this is my first Java program. Let's take a look at our second program in Java. We're going to find the average of three integers. And we'll start out with public class average three. Average three is the name of our program. At the end of the line, we have an open brace. And again, public static void main Repeat, public static void main, followed by string open close brackets args, and an open brace for that as well. Now, inside here is where I have the body of the main method. <clears throat> I'm going to be making use of variables, and in Java, I have to declare them before I use them. So here you'll see int sum comma average, 
and then a semicolon. If I'm going to declare more than one variable in a given declaration, as you see here, I separate them with commas. I then will calculate the sum. Sum equals 2 plus 4 plus 6. And then to find the average, I will divide that by 3. Average equals sum slash 3. As we've seen before in Python, plus is the plus sign. Slash indicates division. And in both cases, you'll notice we use equals to assign the result of this op operation to the variable on the left-hand side. System out println and then open paren quote the average is close quote and here's something we haven't seen before a plus and then average. We will talk a little later about why we have a plus sign here. Now you'll notice afterwards again I have one close brace to indicate the end of the main method another close brace to indicate the end of the class, or as we've known it, a program. Now that first statement that you see there is telling me, or more accurately telling the computer, that sum and average are integers. As we saw in Python, we do want to make note of when we're using integers and when we're using floating point values. And you can see that here. This is an alternate view of that second program because every program's name has to match the name of the file it's in. I will call this one average 3a. You'll notice there's one difference to this. I have declared sum and average in two separate declarations. Now that's perfectly legal either way. Sometimes you'll want to separate them so that there's an, some sense of commonality of the variables in one declaration. And sometimes you want them separate to indicate that this commonality is really not here. This shows you how we can do it in both of these two different ways. A variable is a value that we store at some location in computer memory. And we call it a variable because its value is allowed to vary or change as necessary. Variables, like many other elements of a program, have names. We call these names identifiers because they identify the variable or some other element in a program that we are working with. Identifiers are sometimes standard, as we will see in the case of system. We'll talk more about that later. On the other hand, one of the things that we do have to worry about are the rules regarding how we write variables and what can be included in them. If you have written programs in Python or in just about any mainstream programming language, the rules that we're about to describe will probably seem familiar even if not all of the rules are the same. Identifiers must begin with a letter. But there's one other thing that we could use. They can also begin with an underscore. Typically, we do not put these at the beginning of a variable name, but it can be done. In Java, identifiers are case sensitive. Uppercase or capital letters are different from lowercase letters. They are considered different characters. So the word average with an uppercase A and the rest lowercase, average in all lowercase, and average in all uppercase are three different identifiers. There are a few advantages to this that we will see eventually. But for now, just take it as one of those things that are the rule of the road. Numbers can also appear in an identifier, but not as the first character. Were it to appear as the first character, we might mistake this for a number. Hence, we don't allow it here. Identifiers can be as long as you want. But names that are 
too long usually are too cumbersome. Identifiers cannot be reserved words. Special words in a program such as int or main or others that we will see as we move on and learn more about the language. Let's take a look at a few examples of illegal identifiers and things that we could do to make them legal. In the case of my age, as you see it on the first line, the problem is that there is a blank in the middle of the name and blanks are not allowed. The blank space in between would be taken to mean that these are two separate identifiers. To make the identifier my age one, I put the two words next to each other and I begin the word age with a capital A. This creates what will be known as camel notation with a capital A forming a hump in the middle of the identifier. Two times is problematic because we cannot begin with a number. I can fix this either by reversing the order and making it times two, or by spelling out the word two in two times. Four times five, as you see there with an asterisk, which is the sign for multiplication in Java, is not, is not legal because we cannot have an asterisk in the middle of an identifier. It would read this as three separate symbols, an identifier four, a multiplication operator, and then the identifier five. To have this as one identifier, what I will do is spell out the word times, and I now have four times five. The T and the F both have capital letters at the beginning, so we can see that they are two separate words. The last one here is time and a half. The ampersand is not legal, so I will spell out the word and as you see here. An assignment statement is fairly straightforward. I have the name of a variable. After that, I have an equal sign. And I have to have on the right hand side some expression, a combination of constants and variables that are connected to each other through various operators that we will include. Expressions will combine values using one or more operations. The main operations, as you see here, are the same as we saw in Python. A plus sign for addition, a dash, or as a minus sign or for subtraction, an asterisk for multiplication, and a slash for division. Here are three fairly simple examples. Two plus five, which obviously is seven. You'll notice here I'm using two constant literal values with a plus sign in between. Four times value, using the literal constant value four and presumably the variable value. X slash Y will divide x by the value y. 